So you're asking whether they're corporate employees or government employees to come forward and put their lives on the line to protect others, um, which means then, you know, and, and, and I've gone to court with some folks or I've watched some of these cases, you've got the whistleblower who is usually by themselves and has to pay out of pocket for an attorney. And I've had people tell me, you know, it's, it's tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars of your own money that you have to pay to bring these cases forward. In the meantime, the government is represented by in-house counsel or corporations by in-house counsel. And so that's just part of their normal day. They don't care how long these courts case, cases take. They can go on for 10 years. Nobody's losing their job over it. But in the meantime, the whistleblower is unemployed or has been demoted, is not making the salary they used to. And every couple of months, you know, here comes the bill from the attorney. So they're spending down their um, retirement accounts, their children's college fund. That's causing a lot of marital strife. It's not unusual for me to talk to whistleblowers who are either going through a divorce or in marital counseling, have had to sell the family home, a car, take a second job driving, you know, for like Uber and Lyft. I mean, they are doing what they need to do to make ends meet while these big organizations sit very protected. Um, the fines and the fees they end up paying are a pittance to what the fraud um, what the fraud or the corruption brought in for them. So they don't care how long these court cases take. And even when they do settle, um, they want the employee to sign an NDA. They don't want to compensate them for their comp compensatory losses, like their pain and suffering. They don't want to fully compensate them for their legal fees. So if you've paid out $500,000 in legal fees and they're saying, oh, well, we'll give you 10 or 20% of that, that's not a recovery. So whistleblowers are really discouraged by the process itself to come forward with these wrongdoings. So in the meantime, we know things like corroded water pipes, um, up, up prescribing of opioids. I mean, we've had a case here. I've talked to the law firm at Levin Papantonio here in Florida um, about the opioids and the prescriptions and trying to go after the drug, the drug companies that are um, selling these products, but not properly putting warning labels on products, not informing patients the danger of these products. So when you talk about things like that, um, you know, and we see this as an international problem too, again, not just in the US, uh, where the rules are different. So you can have a big corporation operating in South Africa, in, in other parts of Africa, in the Middle East, in Asia, where they don't have to follow the same rules they have to follow in the U.S., and yet they're trading on the U.S. stock exchange so that they're, they're still playing in our markets, but they don't have to always comply with our rules because they're doing business in these other countries. And the whistleblowers are then kind of stuck with um, the rules of their countries, and those vary um, quite extensively.